What is up, everyone? This is Jeff from the Overwatch team. We are very, very happy to have so many of you joining us from the launch, and it was an amazingly smooth launch, and we really appreciate your patience and support throughout the whole thing. Uh, it's been very overwhelming to the entire team and to all of Blizzard to have so many people enjoying the game right now. So thank you for being a part of Overwatch. We are working on a lot of things to update the game and keep it fresh. We've got new heroes in the pipe right now. We've got new maps on the way, and they'll be coming later this year. So we're very excited for that. And there's also just a lot of quality of life features and other features that we're working on. For example, someday we really want to improve on our spectate mode for both broadcasting and observing. So that'll be exciting when that finally happens. But the thing that we're working on right now and really focus on and hoping to deliver at the end of June is our competitive play update. So you might be wondering, first of all, what is competitive play? So as you guys know, the default way to play Overwatch is in quick play. And that's where we want you to be able to sort of casually, as easily as possible, get into a match of Overwatch and just have fun. Just play the game however you want to play. If you want to be four Maze and two Lucios, go for it. You know, have fun. Maybe you win, maybe you lose. Whatever works for you. But competitive play is an area where players who want to take the game a little bit more seriously can focus their efforts. So with that in mind, we had tried some versions of competitive play in the beta, and we got a lot of feedback that was super helpful to us. Uh, a lot of what we were hearing was that our competitive play format was actually not competitive enough for people, that they wanted more of a sense of skill, and they wanted to know exactly how they ranked against other players. So we really went back to the drawing board in a number of ways on competitive play from what we had in the beta, um, based on your feedback, and we're hoping that this new version speaks more to our competitive players and what they're seeking. So let's go over some of those changes right now. The first thing that people were very vocal about, I think at the time it was the number one upvoted thread on Reddit, was about the season length. Um, and what we had had in the beta was a one-month season. And the reason we were doing this at the time was our system was more progression-based, and it was fun to reset the progression every month. But we heard you loud and clear that you want to know what your, your skill rating is, and you want to be able to stay at that for some period of time so other players can you know, see you at that skill rating and you can see some progression either up or down in that skill rating. So we are changing to more of a three-month season. We're going to base our seasons on the real-world seasons in the Northern Hemisphere. So for example, the season that we'll start with when, when the competitive play feature comes out will be summer. Um, and then you'll basically play for about two and a half months. Um, we're going to have a slight period of time where we take a break between seasons just to allow for everybody to sort of reset. And then we'll start the new season right after that. So fall will come after that. So that's our plan right now to have longer seasons. The other thing that we got a lot of feedback about was how the formats worked within competitive play specific to both assault and escort and our hybrid modes. So we've made some changes there. I'm not gonna go into all the details and we'll be providing those very soon, but I'd rather talk about some of the high level goals and the problems as you guys had, had seen them. And um, hopefully we're addressing those. So one was that the game would often go into sudden death um, too often. So what we were seeing, mathematically, it was actually possible about 50% of the time for these matches to go into overtime, which we thought was too much. Uh, statistically, what we were seeing is they were going into sudden death 35% of the time, which was still way too much for us. We actually like sudden death. When it is a very close match, it's a cool moment to have where you know both teams, you know, it's a coin toss, which, which team is better. They both competed at a really high level. Great, let's go to sudden death. 
but we wanted to minimize how often that happened. We wanted it to be a rare, special thing when the teams were, in fact, very close and not just something that was happening, you know, 35 to 50 percent of the time. So we have some changes in place that will greatly minimize the number of sudden deaths that you see. The other thing with sudden death that we think is really cool is now when sudden death does happen, it will resolve on the map that you are playing. So if you're playing Dorado and the map is going to go to sudden death, the sudden death will be played on Dorado. It won't go to a random control point map after that. The other thing that we were hear hearing a lot about was our assault mode. So this is maps like Temple of Anubis or Volskaya Industries or Hanamura. We heard that these maps were flipping too quickly. They were highly dependent on one or two team fights for the attackers, and then the maps were over way too soon. So we've changed the format in Assault to make those maps last longer and have more of a chance of back and forth between the two teams. So you're probably wondering, you know, exactly what does all that mean? And I apologize for not giving all the details right now, but we're going to have um, a lot of explanations coming very soon that's going to detail what's going on in, in Assault and the other format changes, but we thought that was very important to address. And then the other part of competitive play that was really sort of the, the crux of where we were hearing feedback before on our old system was progression versus skill. And our old system that we had in beta leaned so heavily towards progression. Um, before you were progressing through these tiers, we had you know challenger, advanced, expert. And once you were within a tier, you couldn't drop out of that tier. You would just sort of stay there for your time, and then you would gain diamonds within that tier. And we got a lot of uh, critical feedback that we thought was fair on that system, um, where players were basically saying, you know, hey, it's cool that I'm going up in tiers and stuff, but it feels like a grind. And I just want to know, you know, where is my skill compared to other players' skill? This is competitive mode, after all. Let it be competitive. Um, we took that to heart. And the way the system is going to work moving forward is we are actually, from now on, we're not having tiers at all. We're going to directly correlate what, what internally is called your matchmaking rating, or MMR, as, as players know. And we're going to directly correlate that to something that we're calling skill rating. Um, and skill rating basically is going to go between 1 and 100. And when you come out of your placement matches in competitive play, we will directly show you your skill rating. We will show you all the other players who have placed skill rating as well. And when the match happens, when you're about to go and face off 6v6, we not only show everybody's skill rating right there on the screen, we'll also show you the team average skill rating so you can look right on that screen and see you know, how fair of a match is this that's about to happen. Obviously, if you're the underdog, you stand to gain more and lose less in this new system. That's how a matchmaking system works. Not every match is going to be perfectly fair, but if it's not fair, you do stand to gain more if you win, and you, and you will lose less if you lose. Um, and we're also even showing if people are partied on that screen. So when you're going into a competitive match, you're, you're not going to have to make an assumption right away that, like, hey, I think that other team is a pre-made or, you know, they're all solo queue players. You're going to see right there on the screen who's matched up and who's not. So we feel like that level of transparency has been something that people have been really asking for in competitive play. They want to see their skill. They want to know how their skill matches up against other players. You know, the downside of a system like this, just to, just to be frank, is that, you know, you're going to go down sometimes. It's not always a climb up the ladder. There are going to be times where your skill rating is actually going to go down. Um, and that's what actually happens in a matchmaking system. But this is the sort of competitive system that we think players who are attracted to competitive play really want. And if it's not, I hope we've proven throughout the beta and our responsiveness to change competitive play over time that we're going to change the system over time to really be right for Overwatch and the players of Overwatch. What you guys need to know and understand is that we want this game to be as great as you do. And we're in there right alongside of you, not only monitoring the system, 
listening to feedback, but we're playing as well. So we're feeling exactly what you're feeling. And we have a lot of thoughts and opinions on this as well. So um, we appreciate your patience with us. We, we think the new system is gonna be great. And if any parts of it aren't great right out the gate, we'll be there listening to feedback. And hey, guess what? There will be another season happening right after this one. And we'll make some adjustments and we'll improve the season from there. One last thing that I know a lot of you are excited about and we're asking questions about with competitive play is rewards. So rewards are always controversial when it comes to anything competitive and anything PVP based. We don't wanna do anything that involves power gain or anything like that. We really want it to be an even playing field, but we do have some awesome cosmetic rewards in the system. Not only will there be um, some sprays and player icons that you can only get by playing each season, but there is a very cool customized golden gun system that you guys are gonna see. Um, we think once you see things like Reinhardt's golden hammer, you're gonna be pretty blown away. The highest skill players will be able to unlock that stuff way sooner than anybody else. They'll have it before anybody else. And there will also be some exclusive other cosmetic rewards that only the highest skilled players can get that, that nobody else can get. So we feel like if you really earn some of these rewards, you'll be able to show off and be very unique um, from, from other players, which we think will be cool. So anyway, that's competitive play. I know you probably have a ton of questions, but please rest assured that there is more information coming. We will, we will be very forthcoming with information and we'll answer as many questions as we can about the system. But this is all coming very soon to Overwatch and we're excited to have you play alongside with us. Thanks everybody. Thank you.